Thank you for coming today uh, to Bonefish. Uh, today it's on insurance negotiation. Don't you know insurance is really serious? That's why I wanted to use this picture. <laughs> to maximize the negotiation power, uh, we want to have leverage, right? We want to be negotiating from a point of leverage. And when it comes to insurance, it, a lot of that has to do with information, data. You know, the more you know, the more power you have. And, uh, and that's really the mission of camp, first of all. Uh, but that's a big point that we're going to continue to hit on, how to collect that data, how it's going to be used, and ultimately how the association can benefit from it. Leaning on your trusted advisors, developing partners that aren't just order takers is a big part of this process. Uh, you want to be proactive. You know, education is most expensive when you're finding out through a disaster or when something went wrong. That's an expensive type of uh, education. We want to be ahead of that game. A big term that I'm going to reference is the annualized cost of risk. We have an insurance premium. We have our budget. We budget for insurance. What we really want to be thinking about is what is the annualized cost of risk. So these are items you could be self-insuring for. They could be deductibles. They're all the things that fall into the unknown and the uncertain. There's a lot more than just what's in the policy. So uh, this is one that I put together for an association I started working with. And I'm you know, reading it in detail because not every insurance policy is the same. Uh, and the majority of the insurance policy is exclusions. But it's not just the insurance policies. Um, there's going to be endorsements. There's going to be deductibles. There's going to be limits and exclusions. That's all in the policy contract and framework. Mitigation reports, engineering reports, uh, claims information. And then ultimately what I'm going to be putting in that process is the governing documents. What do the association grounds look like? What is the activity and operations for the association as well? Because those all create exposures. I put these tables in every appraisal and I try to get them out to the client before I begin the appraisal process. Condominiums are governed by 718 and they're easy because this table covers it and it doesn't include anything that should not be in there. These pictures will demonstrate what's included in the hazard coverage versus what's included in the flood coverage. So on the first page at the top, you see just drywall and you can see blanks for where the light fixtures and the, and the switches are going to go. And that's what's covered. On the second photo, you see baseboards, paint, ceiling, fans, and all of that. That would be covered under the flood insurance. Why in the world are prices, replacement costs going up so high so fast? Um, and I looked at the cost of lumber and concrete and steel and all of those things that go into co the cost of a building and the single most important factor in the increased cost is the labor market. And that has a lot to do with the storms that we just went through and there's that supply and demand. I get on the phone with my contractors. In fact, in one case, it was the one that built this particular building. And I said, really? And he said, no, <laughs> I, could, I could build the, the whole thing, including furnish it for that kind of money. And so I, I need to get into exactly what kind of building there are. The frame construction has not gone up very much at all, but the concrete buildings, the ISO 6, fire resistive, have gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at each one very carefully to see how I can mitigate those increases, um, minimize them, but not expose your clients, uh, not have it understated by any measure at all. So. That's been, that's been the fun I've been having. Creating a plan and solving um, the individual challenges each association has concerning their unique exposure. The operations, do we have a playground? Do we have pools? Do we have spas? What is the roof type uh, for that particular building is, is a problem to solve, and it's not a once a year thing. One of the topics that Trevor keeps talking about is, is, is data and, um, and how important it is. I was at a drone conference last September, and the uh, Intel CEO said something that just stuck with me. He said, data is the new oil, and he couldn't be more right. He went on to say, if data is the new oil, then drones are the new wellhead. And, it, and it's really true because uh, uh, John, uh, uh, one, one of my colleagues and I, were working with the Marine uh, Resources Council and what they need is data to find out the temperature changes in the water. What's causing those algae blooms? It's gotten to the point to where a $500 drone 
and the right software and the education how to do it, you can map those buildings. You can build 3D models with those buildings. So the cost, uh, it's really not cost prohibitive anymore. Our infrared sensors will allow you to find water leaks and penetration through the roof membrane. Roofing contractors, obviously the manufacturers, whether you're putting on a coating, a TPO, a mod bit, um, they offer warranties. So we're finding a lot of roofing contractors, especially ones that are doing coatings, uh, if you can go out and find out that your roof's dry, you're a candidate for a coating, and now you can extend your roof out for another 10, 15, 20 year warranty. So we find that a lot of roofing contractors are doing this to cover their butts, to say, hey, we did an IR scan, verified that this was dry, and, and, and we're ready to, um, for you guys to issue the warranty for that coating we're gonna put on, and then the manufacturer most likely will do it. Um, but it's a great way to uh, do non-destructive testing as well. So you're not up on your roof, punching and doing cores to try to find a leak, which in the end could maybe actually cause more leaks. So it's a non-destructive way and, and it allows you to have valuable information that you can submit with your claims and, and, and with, uh, with anything that I guess you're gonna hand off to appraisers or insurance companies. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. I hope the food was good.